Okay, we talked about the tangent function in class, uh, and right at the end, we finally let the calculator do some work, and we discovered that it looks like this. I just want to match that up real quickly to what we were talking about in class, and then go on and talk about uh, some of the other two functions briefly, just to supplement what's in the book. You're definitely going to have to look in the book as well. What we found was that all heck, shall we say, breaks loose at x equals pi over 2. And the simplest thing we can say was that tan of, x, tan of pi over 2 is undefined. But it doesn't tell us much. It doesn't tell us what's going on. Why is it undefined? But we discovered what happens is that just to the left of pi over 2, for angles a little less than pi over 2, in other words, a little less than 90 degrees, we found that the tangent gets super huge and, and positive. And that creates a vertical asymptote. Then, suddenly, as soon as x is a little bit bigger than pi over 2, bigger than 90 degrees, suddenly it comes back with huge negative values. And so there's a drastic thing that happens across that, that line, x equals pi over 2. Besides that, the curve is actually pretty, pretty nice. Tangent of 0, for example, is 0. We know that. And one other point is really important. There's a landmark point. Tangent of pi over 4, well, that's a 45 degree angle. The slope corresponding to a 45 degree angle is 1. Turns out, these are the landmarks for, for tangent. The asymptotes at pi over 2 and, and some others we'll discuss in a minute, at the origin, and at pi over 4, comma 1. Using those landmarks only, usually can get a good graph of tangent and some modifications of tangent. Now, the other thing we notice is it repeats, as all trig functions do, but it repeats, as we talked about, twice as often as we might think. The period is exactly pi. So this asymptote, for example, I claim is at x equals minus pi over 2. Let's see why that would be true on the unit circle. It's because if I go negative, it's exactly where oops, where this line goes to negative pi over 2, or even a little past, that I'm going to get all those really steep slopes and the huge negative or positive numbers. They start out negative slope and then suddenly switch to huge positive numbers. That's this vertical asymptote here. This one, guy is going to be at 3 pi over 2. This is minus 3 pi over 2. And so we see a lot of the pattern of that function. It just keeps going on over and over again forever. So it's this basic pattern of steep, not so steep, and then steep again with the asymptotes on either side. So um, that's what the tangent graph looks like. Now I want to switch to secant. Let's see. Yeah. I want to switch to the secant function. Think about the same kind of reasoning, um, but also do a little bit of a different approach as well. Let's look at the unit circle. And is anything going to go fun go wrong here? Well, this is 1 over cosine. That's probably the best way we want to think about it right now. 1 over cosine, that definitely can go wrong where cosine is 0. And so if I look at points going up again towards that y-axis, the vertical axis on the circle, I'm going to get some problems. Here, this is the region where cosine x is small and positive. And so 1 over cosine x is going to be large and positive. And in other words, it's going to go to plus infinity. That's our, sim our symbolization for that. It really means it gets as large as you can possibly imagine in the positive direction. And then suddenly, oh wait, what happens? Over here, cosine x is small but negative. And so 1 over cosine x, the secant, is going to be large negative. In other words, very far away from 0, like minus 1,000, minus 10,000. In other words, a convenient way to symbolize that is going to minus infinity. Now this is a dangerous kind of thing. Does it make Infinity makes it sound very weird, but it's just a symbol for gets as negative as you can possibly imagine. Negative a billion, negative a trillion, if you want. Okay? So 
that's one way to think about the behavior of the secant. One other thing we can think about with secant is that here's where cosine is at its very, very biggest. Cosine 0 is equal to 1. Well, 1 over cosine, that's where that's going to be the smallest it ever gets. In terms of size, anyway, the smallest value of 1 over cosine, and that's again 1, because 1 over 1 is 1. So there's going to be something special about this point as well. Not nearly as weird as the plus and minus infinity here, but it's going to be something that's going to be very good to think see on the graph. So let me show you how we can get the same insights from a graph of cosine, and then we can use that to put a graph of cosine and a graph of secant together. So let me graph cosine. Let me graph two full periods, left and right of the axis. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to note, OK, things were going totally wacky right at pi over 2. That was bad. And also, if I go to negative pi over 2, 1 over cosine is just not going to make any sense. It's going to be undefined, but the whole point of our investigation with tangent is we've got to say more than that. And that's why I was looking nearby to pi over 2 and thinking about, well, what does secant 1 over cosine do when I'm near to that value, that weird value? Well, that suggests that here at pi over 2, where cosine is 0, I'm going to get another vertical asymptote. And in fact, everywhere where cosine is 0, I'm going to get a vertical asymptote. The next time cosine vanishes is 3 pi over 2, 1, 2, 3 pi over 2. In the negative direction, it's a minus pi over 2, minus 3 pi over 2, all the odd multiples of pi over 2. And it turns out this is really handy for sketching the graph of secant. So let's look at this. The smallest 1 over, cos 1 over cosine secant can get is 1. I can never get any number in between. Let me put the 1 to minus 1. I can never get any number in between 0 and 1. Because to do that from a fraction, I have to take like 1 over 2 or 1 over 5 or something like that. Cosine never gets that big. And so it's never going to be below this line. The 1 over cosine graph, the secant graph. Similarly, it's never going to be like minus 1 half or minus 1 third. Because I'd need to have a minus 2 or a minus 3 in the denominator. It's never going to happen. So it's never going to be in this band. This is where cosine gets to take over. And secant is going to be uh, outside of that. So let's start from here. 1 over cosine 0 is 1. And let's just go to the right and see what happens. Cosine is the, the horizontal coordinate here. It's as big as it ever gets. And as we crank around the circle, increasing the angle so that we're walking this way on this graph, cosine is decreasing. So 1 over cosine x, if I take 1 over a number and the, the denominator is decreasing, I get bigger and bigger things for that fraction. And we know it gets as big as you possibly want. Well, that's, that's our sketch. We're done with that part of it. Turns out that's all the landmarks we really need. Just the fact that it goes from 0, 1, that it matches cosine at its anchor point. They share an anchor point, And then it blows up in kind of a similar way to, to tangent. Then what happens, there's this asymptote. You can't evaluate pi over 2. Don't even try. Just put a dotted line. Then suddenly it reappears with a huge negative value. OK, that comes in from here. And then I claim it comes down, comes to here. Well, that's pi. Cosine of pi is minus 1. And secant of pi, then, is just 1 over minus 1, same thing. So they touch here, they kiss. It's very cute. And then it goes back. I take 1 over a bunch of numbers that are getting smaller and smaller. And that means bigger and bigger. So the relationship of this is as these numbers get close to the axis, it gets more and more dangerous and, and exciting to take one over those numbers and they get big. As soon as this crosses, I'm taking one over these tiny numbers for the cosine, that produces a big, num big negative number for a secant. And then the rest of the pattern is exactly the same. So they match up very nicely, but certainly the secant graph is, you have to say, it's a weirder looking graph. So this part. And this part together is the secant. Notice it's all these different pieces like tangent was, whereas cosine is this connected curve. So that's how secant works. Cotangent and cosecant are very similar, but they relate 
Um, they just kind of shifted over. But I'll let the book take care of that and let you do some problems on it.